Jessie Ware seems to have seen quite a late career bloom. While the first part of her career certainly had a uh, dedicated following and a fan base that was certainly on board with what she was doing, it's really been since What's Your Pleasure where the attention towards her music has certainly uh, increased tenfold. And I think the sort of disco dance pop direction that she took, the sort of sensual direction that she took as well, has really, really done huge, huge, huge things for her career and huge things for her music as well. It's turned a lot of heads. It's made a lot of people more excited to see where she's going to go. And What's Your Pleasure, to be fair, was a really good album and deserved the uh, sort of uh, huge cult following that it garnered and has some really fantastic tracks on it. You know, you've got fring, uh, friggin', friggin', friggin' Soul Control, Ooh La La, the title track, What's Your Pleasure, uh, Step Into My Life. It's a really, really star studded album when it comes to just smash danceable pop hits it really deserved far more mainstream tension than it got and i think if we lived in a just world which i probably have said about a hundred million times on this channel at this point then these tracks and this album would have been like topping the charts and been one of the biggest sellers of the year but we don't live in a just world when it comes to music we of course had the deluxe edition version of that track, which I keep saying at the moment, but deluxe editions are getting so much better nowadays because that deluxe version had some of her best tracks on it as well. For me, uh, Please, I think Please is fantastic. One of her best songs ever, uh, in my personal opinion. So yeah, of course, we've seen a nice, nice upward trajectory for Jessie Ware. And leading up to this new album, man, I gotta say, these singles, were flooring me, like absolutely taking me back. I was so impressed with every single one of them. I was going to keep begin again for the album, actually, but I just couldn't end up resisting just giving it a go. And none of them let me down. And it's really been just an exciting build up to what could be one of the best albums of the year. And it absolutely delivered on that front. It truly is a fantastic album, man. And I am super impressed with what Jesse Ware has done. And I knew at the time with What's Your Pleasure, that wasn't the best we were gonna get. It was sort of like an entry point to what we were gonna get from Jessie Ware. And I just knew there was something that she could brew up that would be even better than that. Because as good as a, of an album it was, I knew that wasn't the peak. You don't start there and peak there. That's just the starting point and you build upon what you did the first time. And she's just literally done that, a, a true, marker of a really good artist is to be able to kind of just build upon what you did before and make it even better and i knew that that that, that she had it in her and she has done that here I don't like to always talk about an album from exactly start to end. I like to mix things up a bit, dart around, talk about tracks that might have similarities, that kind of stuff, etc, etc, etc. But we got to do it this time because the first five tracks, oh my god, this run of tracks is outstanding. The first five songs, not to say that the rest of the album isn't good, that's not what I mean. It's just these first five tracks. What a run this is. It's an outrageous run of tracks. The quality is so high. And with time, I think this could be up there with one of the, you know, more exciting and exhilarating five track runs on really any album you can think of. It is outrageous how good this is. That feels good, kicking things off. Talk about disco, talk about dance pop. Let's talk about the friggin' funk, my friends. The funk that she brings to the table, the, the, the bass that is laid down on this track is so bloody good. Oh my damn, 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 is this track friggin' fantastic. What in the Rick James is this? Seriously, the funk influence coming through immediately sets the tone for the whole thing. You're immediately locked into the groove. She's giving you kind of sensual whispery vocals that make you tingle a little bit. It's just so good. And it brings back that classic days of funk so effortlessly and so seamlessly into the world of Jessie Ware. Her delivery is something that you gotta keep mentioning when it comes to this album too, because it's so varied, even within tracks, like the way she's kind of singing and giving you a bit more of like a, a sensual tone and then kind of darting around a little bit with her voice. It just makes it so fun. It makes it so uh, enjoyable. It makes you feel like you're not quite you're not quite knowing what you're gonna get next. But of course, then her delivery can completely change up from track to track as well. But yeah, I just love this one for how she does vary up multiple times within one track. And by God, I've got to say, 
What is she talking about on this track? I do wonder what it is that feels good. Hmm. Free Yourself, one of the singles, one of the more kind of airy and lively and light feeling track as well at the same time. Uh, the sort of gospel influence comes through really well. Love the way her voice just kind of has this echoey effect on the chorus too. It just makes the song feel so big and she's kind of like shouting from the heavens and telling everyone to free themselves in such an empowering way. I feel like this track just offers such a great feeling in that sense. Pearls uh, carries on this insane run. God damn. <laughs> God, that, what a track this one is. The vocal performance on the chorus. Uh, wow, she reaches some really, really impressive notes and she belts out that line uh, on the chorus so fantastically as well. I think the feeling that this song gives you is so positively and urgent. It is just so, so, so infectious. It just touches your soul so perfectly. This is what I mean. The last album did have moments that felt like they could have hit this point, but they never quite got there. But she's getting there almost immediately within the first few tracks on this album. And it's just like, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Really, really reminiscent of some Shaka, Shaka Khan, this one, that kind of like diva feel to it. Uh, really reminds me of some Shaka Khan. The entire album actually has that insanely feel-good energy that you get from Shaka Khan's best works. And that is probably one of the biggest compliments you can give to a modern artist because there really aren't many out there like Shaka Khan. She's a lady, a lover, a freak, and a mother as well. All four in one. Who is doing it like her? I don't think many people are out there doing it like Jessie. But yeah, the vocal performance on this one is just absolutely sublime. And speaking of sublime vocal performances, we may as well keep this going with Hello Love. What a, what a track this one is. Really strips things back into the more emotional setting that we're known. We, you know, we, we, we're certainly... We certainly become accustomed to with Jessie. And to be fair, as good of a voice as she has, like she sells these moments as well. Like she can make these big moments and also sell these emotional moments too, because she has a fantastic voice. I mean, uh, looking back at a track like Wildest Moments, which is a really old song now in her career. But again, listening to those tracks, you really capture how great her voice is. It's classy, it's lush, I'm getting Leanne the Harvest from the vocals as well. I said that about the final track on Watch Your Pleasure too, where she really reminded me of some Leanne the Harvest and this track as well is capturing that for me. And then Begin Again, which seems to be the most hyped up and celebrated tracks from this album so far. And to be fair, you can certainly see why this track just turns things up to 11 like the expansive feel that this song has the instrumentation the way it flourishes and takes different directions throughout like the production is so on point with this one and has a bit of like that quincy jones feel as well where you're almost feeling like you're just transitioning into new sections of the track as it moves along and to be fair, the production team is probably influenced by Quincy Jones. I mean, how can you not be with all of this sort of like 70s and 80s disco soul funk feel to it throughout the entire thing? It's so magical at points. It feels really theatrical at stages as well. Really fantastic track on the album. The horns are exceptional. Love me some horns in a song. I will say that. I say it all the time, but they sound great on this track. And while it's not my favourite on the album, it certainly is a great way to cap off that five track run. And again, I'm not trying to say that the album stops there because it doesn't, but that run just blows me away. Those first five songs is ridiculous, man. Beautiful People carries on the hooky nature of this album, the infectious nature of this album as well. The track that somehow tries to convince you that beautiful people are everywhere. Let me tell you, man, she does not walk through the streets often, like the streets of any town in the UK, because people are kind of ugly, you know, like most people, they're kind of ugly, like really not that good looking, but wherever she's going, seriously seeing different things to what I see, which is a bit of a shame. But what a great opener to the track this is with the with the verses and the way it kind of has this kind of like danceable nature too. And her delivery is so, so cheeky and silly on this track. Really like it on here. And it reminds me of some like, uh, confidence man to be honest uh, I feel like this track particularly on the verses that kind of like danceable little instrumental and that those vocals so so reminis reminiscent of a confidence man song
The bridge is fantastic, so, so lively and so much going on. Really wanna just shake my booty to this one. And then the sort of like empowering, uh, you know, lyrics that come through where it's like, actually, you know, you've gotta remind yourself that you're the beautiful person. Uh, it does it in a less cheesy way than you'd get from like a Lizzo. So I feel like this track does sell that really well. Shake the Bottle as well continues that sh cheeky, cheeky, cheeky approach that she's got going on this one. Really find uh, the kind of like instructions approach where she's kind of like telling you what to do on the chorus. Really fun, really silly. I, I feel a TikTok trend coming with that one, honestly. I I'm not saying she did it for the purpose of that, but I think if she markets this song really well, uh, she could seriously get a TikTok trend from this track for sure. Um, and I've been getting these little mini predictions right uh, quite recently as well. So let's see if this one holds up too. Come back to me when if I get it right. You, you got to tell me I was the one that said it first. I love the ooh that comes through in the track as well. There's all these little details within like the backing vocals and the, the, the sort of like horn sections and the instrumentals on this album. Little, little details like that just absolutely capture the essence of what this style of music does so well. I think she really did her homework, particularly on tracks like this. Just pulling out all these influences from yester decades, if that's even a thing to say. But yeah, seriously, just pulling that influence has just nailed all of these qualities down to a T. I think the track Lightning has a somber tone to it that I think is nice. It's a very pretty song. And again, she sells it with her voice, but I don't necessarily feel like the album needed to go this slowly. It sounds like some ballad from 2004, honestly. Uh, not to attack the song in that kind of way, but I just think it's quite easily the weakest track um and then of course you get the final track these lips which again I, I, I just such a head scratcher what is she talking about i just i just can't figure it out but yeah might have even one of the best and funniest lines of the whole album where she says these lips are wanted in more than a hundred countries maybe more which i found was quite an entertaining little part of the song uh really delving deep into sort of the se sensual nature that we kn we've known from jesse because she is a freak as well as she told us on pearls but yeah musically this track is so fun um just everything is done really well like it's just done so well this album man i didn't even mention freak me now but again that one's really fun as well like this album is just nailing everything perfectly from its influences to expanding on the previous album to jesse Ware just finding herself i think with this album like she's really let it all go she seems to be really carefree, just letting loose, just throwing down some really cheeky, funny, silly moments and just embracing it. Like, I feel like she's just embracing everything on this album and it really shines through in the music, in the vocals. She's super, super charismatic on this whole thing. She hits some amazing vocal performances as well. Musically, she's found her feet totally well here. Um, she just sounds at home in this sound and while sure she's pulling from those clear influences as I say from the 70s 80s you know classic disco you know classic classic era of music that I think if you are unfamiliar with or you've never really given much of a chance and you're a big fan of this album you're doing yourself a huge disservice by not going back to check out those classics because let me tell you right now they have made this album really come to life, to be honest. And I think Jesse would be the first person to say that too. Um, it, it, it's brilliant, it's brilliant. It's done so well. It's an album that starts kind of from 100 on every track and stays there, but somehow never gets old. I think albums sometimes can suffer from that if they start at 100 and then have nowhere else to go. But this album starts from 100 from pretty much start to end and it just never lets lets go of the, the brilliance, really, for me, which is a very rare thing to say. And I, and I think people might, might, might throw a bit of a, oh, you're overrating this one a bit. And some people may even call this album generally overrated by critics as well. But I love this, man. I'm going to go 9 out of 10. I told you already in last week's video on Sunday, where I ranked the albums in a tier list, that this was an album of the year contender, and it has remained that way. And that five track run at the beginning, I will keep talking about that for the rest of the year, because I think that is truly exceptional. And Jessie Ware has nailed it here. 
and that is it from me i don't want to keep repeating myself here you know what i think of this album i think it's fantastic so so good feel like it was made for me at times with the funk and shit man all that is really really me down to a t so thank you for watching have a good day subscribe if you haven't already tell me your thoughts on this album if you haven't heard it please let me know and goodbye